joke, joke, kill, kill, that more or less sums up The Suicide Squad, the latest installment in the DC Comics franchise. Shiny, busy and self-satisfied to a fault, this chapter follows the comic book movie template, now with 20% more gore. It also has enough cinematic illusions to give critics something to chew on. When the writer-director James Gunn is asked how he likes his steak, I am pretty sure he flashes on Pulp Fiction and, summoning up John Travolta at his suavest, says bloody as hell. Stuff happens, you betcha. Mostly, Gunn's fire and faceless minions die by the truckloads as the upmarket hires, Idris Elba, Margot Robbie and a ferocious Viola Davis, earn their pay with precision-timed shtick and unimpeachable professionalism. Both Robbie and Davis embrace their formulaic roles with energy, but neither has enough to do. Elba is pleasantly loose as Bloodsport, an archetypal reluctant squad leader who, unlike most of the B-team crowding the screen, has a personality animating his tough guy crust. A few other familiar headliners pop up, including Sylvester Stallone, Pete Davidson and, notably, Taika Waititi, who's taken the reins on the Thor flicks for Marvel and whose presence here reads like a winking joke. In 2018, Gunn, who directed the first two Guardians of the Galaxy movies, was excommunicated by Marvel during a social media tempest. After he was called out for cracking tasteless jokes on Twitter once upon a time, Gunn was fired. There were brandished Twitter pitchforks and, from Gunn, sincere self-flagellation, and then, in a sign of cancel culture craziness, he was rehired less than a year later. He was also hired to take on a project for Marvel's arch-nemesis, DC, hence The Suicide Squad, a follow-up to the witless 2016 hit, Suicide Squad. Gunn's contribution is more watchable than its predecessor but is nevertheless a drag. His first Guardians movie was a diverting surprise that didn't feel encumbered by its importance as a lucrative Marvel property. It was funny and visually ambitious and, for a contemporary comic book movie, had uncharacteristic lightness. By the second Guardians, though, the series already felt stale and Gunn seemed content to simply crank up the volume. There's a lot of carnage and pop tunes in Gunn's Suicide Squad, along with an impossible, possible mission, bad and good guys, the stench of Nazi villainy and the comedy of a rampaging Godzilla-sized monster. The movie is based on DC characters introduced in 1959, but like innumerable action movies, the obvious touchstone is Robert Aldrich's The Dirty Dozen, 1967, especially in its cynicism and narrative thrust. Aldrich described this kind of film, he made a couple, as, its X number of men trying to get from here to there and back, or from here to there and survive, so, basically Odysseus and his bros. It's a durable formula that has worked across a range of genres from westerns to war movies.